Ladies and gentlemen, Andres Salmirai, JSR377, what's up and what's next? Thank you, Ivan. Oh, this thing is actually working. All right. Uh, first off, let me say I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time in Bulgaria, your beautiful country. And uh, let's, let's kick off uh, with uh, J Prime. So I'm glad to see that there are plenty of people here in the room. And uh, does anybody here know what JSR 377 is about? Just a few hands, okay. Precisely, this is the, the reason why we have this talk. And I have also been told by the organizers, as you heard early in the, uh, the first announcements in the, uh, the conference, that we have a hacker gotten. So I'm actually one of the, I would say, founders of the uh, hacker gotten idea. And we're supposed to be having a hacker gotten outside of this room. Uh, it will start just after this session. The whole point of the hacker gotten, if you don't know what it is, is that we come together and work on open source projects, any project that is open source, any language, everything is open, everything goes, yes, even JavaScript. So, uh, if you want to know how to get in open source, if you have a, encounter a bug in, in a, an open source project that you use in your daily work and you think you can solve it or you want help in solving it or adding a new test case, documentation, whatever, any kind of contribution is great and that's exactly what we're going to do right after this session. So all of you are welcome to join. You can spend a few minutes, a few hours, the whole day, as much as you want. The whole point is to make things better, making the world a better place, one commit at a time. So without any further ado, my name is Andres Almeray. I am from Mexico, but I didn't fly all over the way from Mexico. I actually live in Switzerland. We're for this company called Canoe. We are a Java shop. We do all things Java. We work with lots and lots of interesting technologies, and uh, one of the technologies that we care much about are the desktop ones. So, yes, this is going to be a desktop technology talk. Please don't rush out of the door. I know there's a web technology on the other side. Uh, so we have found, actually, that uh, desktop technologies are not dead. Yes, mobile and web are all the rage, everybody wants to do JavaScript or not. Uh, but companies, organizations, customers, clients still rely on desktop applications to do the daily work. You, you will find them in banks, you will find them in pharmacies and research institutes in many places. As a matter of fact, what kind of tool do you use to run a web application? The browser, isn't it? What kind of application is the browser? It's a desktop application. Without desktop apps, you cannot have the web. As simple as that. Anyway, so the, the talk today is about this JSR 377. The idea is to come up with a set of APIs, a standard set of APIs that will allow you, the guys, developers, to create applications that target the desktop and also embedded devices. And we'll see in a moment why we are targeting both environments. All right, so that's pretty much what I can say about myself. Well, I'm also a Java champion. I love the Groovy because I'm a Groovy man. I love the Gradle. I'm one of the founders and project leads of the Griffon framework, which happens to be one of the many frameworks that you can use in order to create desktop-based applications. All right, enough. So. A little bit of history, this is going to be quick, but just so that you know where we stand. Some years ago, right after Java, uh, in, this, in that case was Java J2EE, now known as Java EE, the people that work in Java EE really hate when they keep saying some, something like J2EE. So you know what to say when, when you want to do it. Anyway, so about that time, uh, somebody came up with the idea, well, we have containers on the server side. Wouldn't it be a good idea if we had containers on the client side? Sure. And that's how JSR193 came around. Basically the same idea. For some reason or another, this JSR didn't come to fruition and eventually was withdrawn. Some years later, this is around 2006, we got a couple of new JSRs, 296 and 295. One is called the Swing Application Framework, and they call it Beans Binding. The great thing about the Swing application framework is that, well, it was targeting the Swing toolkit because that was the only official 
toolkit coming from JDK. Uh, we can spend a lot of time discussing is SWT or Swing the best choice for you. Uh, so we got Swing, perfect. And it brought us uh, those ideas. So what was great about the Swing application framework is that it was clearly identified that every application has to go through almost the same life cycle. So let's standardize on that. You may have an initializing phase or a bootstrap phase, then you go into a warm up and then finally, or a startup, and then finally you're in the main phase where all the work is happening, and at some point in time the user will quit the application and that's when you do the shutdown phase. Perfect. We also have uh, the idea of localized resources and even go all the way to do resource injection. Interestingly, 296 was proposed before we got JSR 330. Does anybody know what JSR 330 is? Dependency injection. So actually this GSR inspired a little bit of the work that happened in dependency injection. And we also got persistent session state, which means that you're working on an application, perhaps you have your windows in certain sizes, locations, some other stuff like, uh, I don't know, docking. And when you shut down and you want to come back again into the application, you want dot, all that, dot, that state to be realized again, right? You don't want to, to lose your layout and your ordering. That's pretty much it. And then anybody can hook into this persistent state and save anything they need. Now, we also got the loosely coupled actions, which means you can have uh, some portion of behavior, uh, the, the smallest um, unit of word that you can have at the time was a method. Now we can have Lambda expressions, thanks to Java 8. But say you want to attach to that piece of behavior some additional metadata, such as icons, names, descriptions, tooltips, and you want to reuse that information in several places. You can hook it up into a button, or you can put it on a menu item or on a toolbar, but it's the same action, and it may look different depending on the space. So that's exactly what they wanted to have with loosely coupled actions. And finally, well, of course, we were targeting the Swing uh, toolkit because, well, that's the only thing that we had. So everything was fine and dandy until three years later, and then this JSR was abandoned. It was dead. And nothing happened in this space for a couple of years. So that's how we came around to do this JSR. Nowadays, we get more than two toolkits to choose from if you're working inside the JVM. You probably knew, of, you were probably aware of Swing, of course, and SWT, and most likely JavaFX. Who's doing JavaFX development these days? Just a couple of hands. Interesting. Well, there are two other toolkits that you can have access to which run natively in Java. One of them is Apache Pivot, which looks a lot like JavaFX. And the other one is GTK, only if you're targeting Linux. And there's also this guy in the middle called Qt, which was born outside of the JVM and is, or it used to be very popular uh, in Nokia phones and in C and C++-based applications, but you can run it in Java through an open source project called Qt Jambi. So plenty of options. There's actually another framework that I didn't mention here. doesn't have a logo. Anybody here familiar with N courses and Linux? Right? OK. What if I tell you that you could have something like this? So N courses is a simple character-based toolkit for you to display menus or whatnot. So what if I told you that you can have the same thing in 100% Java, no external native libraries? This toolkit is called Lanterna, and it's also open source. OK. So once you have picked one of these toolkits, the next step is how do you build the application? And also, which environment do you target? Because until a few years ago, we were just talking about machines like these ones, laptops and desktops and servers. But now we have access to these tiny computers, the Raspberry Pi, or even smaller than this. Now, these tiny devices are so powerful now that we are able to run not just regular uh, command line tools or command line applications. We can run UI-based applications. So yes, that is true. We can run JavaFX on this tiny machine. And when you pair all these things, well, you, just ha you don't, no longer have to pay thousands of uh, bucks in order to get one of these just to have a simple UI in front of your office to display 
uh, I don't know, some kind of dashboard for your projects. As a matter of fact, this is something that we did at our own company. We built a JavaFX application, put it on a Raspberry Pi, and now, whenever we want to go to a meeting, we have several meeting rooms, then it's easy to know in that big screen, which is uh, controlled by this JavaFX application, if a meeting room is going to be busy or not, and who is going to be in that particular meeting. You can do many things with this, with these kind of tools now. So what is out there now? So you have actually many choices. The problem with these many choices is that once you pick one of them, it's likely that you're going to be stuck with the one that you chose because it works in certain way. It follows a particular path. And if you encounter many problems with that particular solution, and if you say, I want to migrate to another one, this pretty much means you have to start over again. Because the way that this platform works is not exactly the same way as the other one. Actually, sometimes it's completely opposite. So I'll, I lay out these options from, uh, again, as I would say, from the, um, the size of the solution. So on the first level, you have the big platforms, the platforms where I expect most people to be familiar with. If you are in the automotive industry, most likely you're using Eclipse and Eclipse RCP to build applications. Or maybe you have gone with NetBeans RCP and then just build applications on top of that. Then you got the next level of frameworks, which are highly customizable. They may or may not support different UI toolkits. They may or may not support the same ideas and behavior that JSR 296 brought us. So of course, I will mention Griffin. And I say, previously, I'm a leader of the project, so I'm biased to showcasing Griffin. Here's the logo, by the way. And uh, so I carry it with me all the time. And uh, there's also a possibility to target uh, mobile devices, uh, just like this one, or a tablet, using uh, the gluon particle of Basilix frameworks. And then you also go to the lowest possible level with the smallest framework, which in this case will be Afterburner, which I failed to mention. It's just three classes. It's very minimal, but gives you the smallest set of behavior that you need. And of course, there are many, many more. All these frameworks, all these platforms, provide the following features in one way or another. So that's great. So once we identify how one of these frameworks does one thing, we can map it to the other. And as I said, it's, sometimes it's easy to migrate from one to another. Sometimes it's very difficult because there is no standard set of APIs between these frameworks. So what we want, just like in JSR 296, we would like to have a common application lifecycle. We want to know exactly when the application is starting or initializing so that we can look up resources or connect to a database or establish a connection to a network device. And then during the startup or warm-up phase, we realize and compose all the views and put all the components, make them ready. Then you switch into the main phase, and boom, you got the main application, the main window, actually. And then just do the work. And then finally, eventually, when you need to quit, that's the, when the shutdown phase comes in. We also would like to have localized resources because we live in a global world. We speak many different languages. If I were in my local uh, place, I would speak in Spanish to you, and you probably don't understand me. Uh, anybody here speak Spanish? Yeah, no hands, see? OK, so that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that the information that we put out into the application can target the specific audience. And uh, persistent session state, loosely coupled actions, pretty much the same thing as we saw before. But we also have a few more features, such as dependency injection. Now that we have dependency injection, it's really hard to think about or reason about creating an application without dependency injection. Does anybody here does not use Spring or CDI or Juice? Only a few brave hands. But most of you use some kind of dependency injection mechanism. So we should do the same thing for desktop. Event systems. An event system allows you to have loosely coupled components communicating each other without each other knowing where they are, right? This is also great. We have these things on the server side. We can reuse them also on the client side. Uh, centralized error management. 
This is, uh, I have a, a very particular anecdote on, on this uh, feature. I used to work for a big company where we built, surprise, surprise, a desktop application. And inside the firewall, whenever an error occurred, we needed to pop a dialog where the uh, developer would input the list of uh, steps to reproduce the problem, click submit, and that will file automatically um, issue in our issue tracker. And then people will try to solve the bug. Perfect. But if the same problem appears in production mode, that means outside of the firewall, then that means a customer, a real user, has encountered the error. Is, will it be OK for a real user to fill out a bug report? Not likely. So you like to display something else. Now, the important thing about the centralized error management is that depending on if you're running in production mode or in development mode, you can funnel all those errors and make a decision. Am I in development? Then you should track a dialogue. Am I not? I'm in production. Then customer-friendly dialogue, something like, oops, an error occurred. I'm about to crash. Save your stuff because it's gone. OK? And this was very useful. Actually, our users really like this because, hey, you are kind to me. You're giving me the chance to save. Where in the background, we know, oh, all hell is broken loose. Anyway, finally, none of these frameworks can provide you with all the behavior that you need. So they must have extension points. Whether you call them extensions or plugins, add-ons, it doesn't matter. They still have to give you, you the capabilities. They have to empower you to change things, to modify things, to extend them. All right. So I've been talking about desktop. And I mentioned the Raspberry Pi. And now it's, it's OK to say that Raspberry Pis are kind of in the uh, revolution of IoT. But when we're saying IoT, we don't mean just a couple of Raspberry Pis connected together. And I said IoT actually means gathering information from sensors and doing important stuff with that, just talking with different devices together. And because we can run JavaFX applications on top of these small devices, it will be great if we can build applications for such devices. So how would you build an application just like that? Would you just, I don't know, try to grab, if possible, a Maven archetype or some other kind of build tool and then figure out what to do? Or what if we just use the same ideas that we have used so far when creating a desktop application? So that's precisely the point. Building an application for desktop and building an application for embedded devices is almost in the same way. Can we use the same APIs? Yes, that's the whole point of this JSR. All right. By the way, I failed to mention, but if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask them anytime. We only get, well, now we have less than 50 minutes. Uh, but, and I said, after this session, uh, we can have a talk at the Hacker Garden, all the halls, I'm here the whole day. So the goals for this JSR now, we're getting into the proper uh, subject, are these ones. We want to target both environments. We want to empower you to write desktop applications and when the need arises, you can use almost the same code base to target embedded devices, just like that. We also want to support several toolkits. Previous attempts only used one toolkit. Now we want to support Swing, SWT, JavaFX, or any other future toolkit that may come around. We also want it to be a standalone JSA. What does this mean? This means we can release at any time we're ready. We don't have to wait for JDK 9 or JDK 10 or any other future JDK release. The, I, the original goal for this JSR was to be uh, ready by um, early this year. We are still working on it, so we are a little bit late. But once we're ready, we will just be able to push the release and anybody will be able to consume it. The target Java level for now for this JSR is Java 7. And you may be wondering, why Java 7? Is a neat end of life? Are everybody supposed to be already working in Java 8? Who's running Java 8 in production? I am. See, less or than a half of the people in the room are running Java 8 in production. So anybody still running Java 6? 
to your hands. OK, here's the, 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 uh, the proof of fire. Is anybody still running Java 5? Some hands, see? So we need to target Java 7 as the minimum, because Java 7 is the only thing that runs on mobile devices. Uh, no, I won't, I won't ask for Java 4. And I know that we had some customers migrate from Java 4 last year. Uh, yes. OK, so we, want, we need to make it Java 7 as a minimum, because Android requires Java 7. It doesn't yet run Oracle JDK, which will be J uh, Java 8. The same thing goes for iOS. We need to support Java 7. So the next thing is we want to leverage existing JSRs. There's no need to reinvent the wheel if we already got a working wheel. The case in point is dependency injection. We got a small JSR called 330, dependency injection. We need dependency injection, just use it. At some point in time, we also saw that CDI, uh, which is a bunch of behavior around um, context and dependency injection and on the server side, actually has many things. And one of them is an event bus. One of the ideas of CDI is to break it down into smaller pieces so that you can consume one without having to consume the whole thing, which will be overkill in a client, in a desktop. Uh, sadly, CDI is going to be delayed until next year, and we want to release as much as early as possible. So even though we can have a look at their APIs, we won't be able to reuse them as is. What we can do is design something that looks very closely to what CDI offers, and then it will be easier for people to switch from one to the next. So we're targeting these core features. You will see some of those features are duplicates from when JSR 296 provided in the beginning because actually 296 was going into the right path. It's just that it wasn't that ambitious. We want to do more also. So that's why we also provide in configuration. We are providing the event system, which I talked a few minutes ago, the centralizer management, the extension uh, points via plugins, and one more thing, MVC artifacts. Because, well, people like to write, write applications using the MVC pattern, but we're still deciding if we should follow the MVC pattern or not, because how many MVC pattern variants exist out there? There's the standard MVC pattern that nobody understands because it's actually not very well uh, documented, believe it or not. Well, there's the model view presenter, and there's a model view view model, which sounds weird, but it works. And there's the, uh, the model view adapter, and there's a hierarchical MVC model, and there's, uh, there are so many out of there. So why should we constrain you to follow one path, say, it's only MVC, and if you call it presenter, you're doing it wrong. Uh, that's not the point. You, are, you guys are the ones in charge. You should be the ones saying, I want presenter, I'm going to use presenter, why not? I like model view view model, I'm going to use it. But we're going to provide at least the basics to say models is where we have data. Controllers or something that looks like control is where we have behavior. And views is where we have the widgets and access to the UI controls. Okay, now you just rearrange those whole things. We still have the basics for data, views, and logic, or business. Out of scope for this version, because we would like to, for this JSR to continue going and going in the future, as Java EE has done so, uh, we won't offer position session state yet, because there are many ways to do this, there are many ways to implement it, and it's going to be a really long discussion how to do it, so we'll just skip it. We're also going to skip some kind of artifact introspection API. What do I mean by this? If you got a view component, a view is probably composed of different UI elements. And these UI elements are arranged into a specific layout. So you want to find out if a UI element is in a particular space within the UI, you want to have that capability. If you are in a controller, and a controller is an aggregation of actions, then you would like to know which actions actually belong to a controller. If you are in a model where you put all your data, you want to know which properties may be observable, bindable, read-only, required. So these are the things that we 
we say they are part of the artifact introspection API because a controller is an artifact, a model is an artifact, a view is an artifact, presenter is an artifact. Uh, and we also will not provide a specific UI toolkit updates. This means we're not going to design an API that abstracts over what a button is. So that later you can go with Swing, JavaFX, SWG, or something else. Makes no sense. Because that common abstraction is, has to be the, 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 uh, the low.